Jago 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 Jago
So that is the first thing I think everybody has to do. So the lead by example and zero tolerance even within political parties. Shaban Azmi, you've been in parliament. We're <laughs> looking at this shocking statistic that actually comes from the National Crime Records Bureau that 44% of the crimes against women that are reported are actually dealing with cruelty uh, uh, by husbands and relatives. If you add the dowry death cases to that of about 3.9%, you're looking at half. Half of all crimes against women are cruelty, abuse inside the home, and yet this is not a political issue. Well, the pressure to keep the marriage alive under all circumstances is really the culprit. The woman herself has internalized the fact that for her, she has to keep the marriage alive. And so she accepts domestic violence. And when she goes to the parents, the parents say, Ek thapadi to mara tha. he was in a bad mood, why shouldn't you? The fact is that it is for the parents to say zero tolerance for domestic violence. And the parents should leave, lead the, leave the doors of their homes wide open for their daughter exactly. like they do for their son. But look at what society does. Society, like Flavia is saying, stigmatizes the woman. You should stigmatize the man. There should be actual morchas that are taken uh, outside the man's name house. And shame and name, name and shame. I mean, it should become impossible for him to get but married. I, I have to ask this, Shabana, because you were in parliament. You've seen so many women uh, leaders. One would have thought that that in itself would be a great example to follow. Yet women uh, politicians, like the men, don't seem to take up women's issues. Sir, women's issues do not figure in parliament. Look at the battle that is being fought for the 33% reservation for women. Every political party says that they are committed to it. And when push comes to shove, you know that they, sho they take it to the back burner. The fact is that it does, doesn't seem to strike people that women are a very strong vote bank. And that's why it's important that women actually demonstrate that we are an important vote bank and we want our agenda to be included the women's agenda is also a human rights agenda okay and so demands have to be made all right now Flavia had mentioned this and of course much of the abuse that we see inside homes is related to harassment over dowry while women worldwide face abuse dowry deaths is something most heard of unfortunately in the Indian subcontinent so what can we do on that first let's just take a look at the figures in India more than 8,000 women were killed for dowries in 2012 that's a startling figure it's not it's in fact it has not decreased in the last few years except marginally as a result one woman dies every hour because of dowry disputes here are our action points first and it's a point on most cases politicians prominent citizens must pledge against dowry they must say that they are not taking or giving dowries when their children are married. Many have cited uh, problems with dealing with the police, whether it's police corruption or uh, police inactivity over prosecuting dowry cases. We see um, uh, close to just 2% in fact of many of these cases yes. seeing a conviction. There must be accountability at every police thana uh, for them. Flavia, um, we've, we've seen the dowry law itself is very stringent. If any woman dies within seven years of her marriage of unnatural causes, straight away there's a, there's a possibility of a police case. And yet, the more than 30, 40 years since that dowry uh, law first came about, there's no decrease in the number of dowry deaths. The issue here is violence in the home other than dowry is not taken seriously. So we get these figures, the women have died. There's a dead body in front of you. You go to the police and they say, is it dowry or is it not dowry? Mm -hmm. And of course, there must be some demand somewhere. So you foreground dowry. But in the court, this, this dowry allegation doesn't stand. So there is not only acquittal, but also that women are misusing the law. So uh, we have to deal with it. Secondly, when we say don't take dowry, don't give dowry, I think uh, alongside we have to say all parents will give property rights to their daughters. That's, that's, yeah, that that's the crux of the matter. It issue. has to be property rights. <laughs> That everybody shies away from until and unless you say that property rights have to be granted equally to the daughter, all these will continue. Because all right, that's, a, that's a very important action point right there that the property laws are in fact, even though they have amended the property laws last year, the, it's the property that women must have a secure home to go to or some part of the property that... Yes, even in my own case, I'm from an educated family and everything, but when I came back, I, I struggled to get out, struggled to come back. There was a certain section in my family family that fought me that you cannot have any rights. So today I'm struggling to bring up children alone and they take away the rights that I have. So at every stage in a woman's life, 
you know when she gets married there is a struggle after when she tries to get out there is a struggle when she comes back there is a struggle the struggle doesn't stop well, in fact the struggle starts right at the beginning up ahead we're talking about crushing the female child right from the very beginning whether it's feticide or child sexual abuse these are difficult issues but what needs to be on the political agenda to tackle them in fact before we take this short break let's listen in to what actor and politician khushboo had to say you're watching the power of 49 stay with us jagore 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 i think the first time your husband is abusive towards you or any member of the family is abusive towards you you need to stand up and say let this be the first and last because it won't take me long to hit you back the minute you stop respecting yourself and you get completely uh, pushed down by the so called norms of the society we live in or by the so called culture of the society that it's fine for a man in a way to hit a woman because he is a man and he was angry even women get angry even they can turn around and hit back a man jagore 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 ko ra ko tata ko power of 49 power by tata prakash kaur was abandoned by her parents only because she was a girl today she is mother to more than 60 girls like her and little zainab whose families leave them to die often dumped in black polythene bags abandoned on highways or left in a cradle at prakash kaur's home for girls in jalandhar ye sabse bada dharm hai sabse bada dharm love to women fir wo bachche jisko kisi ne fenk diya many girls don't even make it that far killed at birth or in the womb as india's sex ratio plummets to the lowest levels in the world Welcome back. In fact, Prakash Kaur's girls are a common story across the nation. If the girl child isn't killed in the womb, so many simply abandoned for their gender. Here on the power of 49, we want to talk about tackling this that sex ratio of 940 girls per 1000 boys. Now, some of the uh, the suggestions that have come to us through activists is suspending the license of the doctor involved in any female feticide case. uh considering cancelling his or her medical degree strong action against the doctors involved making female feticide a non bailable offence for those involved including the parents when we look at some of those stories shabana azmi i remember very clearly when you got involved in the hiv aids campaign just the act of standing with a young girl who you said was hiv it has a massive impact yet when it comes to something like female feticide something people just don't talk about inside the home do you think a uh, public personality is coming out talking about it makes any difference at all yes of course it will make a uh, difference because what i cannot understand is how a subject like female uh, feticide an issue like that is not an emotive issue because the fact is that this one doesn't happen only in the rural hinterland it happens in south mumbai it happens in delhi Absolutely. it happens in haryana in punjab in gujarat in mehsana district it has been reported that one girl has to marry four brothers because there are no women left yes. and this is not this is anecdotal evidence but Absolutely. we also have other evidence and the fact is that we have seen that when there is political will when there has been a district magistrate as was done in haryana also in punjab uh, you remember he actually managed to bring this down you need political will and you need conviction of doctors who are Uh, involved in involved. it over there rashmi anand do you have an action point here uh, when you talk about female feticide we've spoken about stricter laws spoken about leading you know, by example uh, i really believe that if you talk about women's laws and women's issues if we even implement talk about stricter laws even if we implement the existing laws in a structured in a in a way which we are dedicated to doing what we do i don't see that we would have so many problems just enforce what we have just put the structures into place that you know govern the laws govern the people in a correct way so All it's right. not about being strict or doing extra things 
just put out the things that you are there for and perhaps making those who are in, in charge of implementing Absolutely. those laws more accountable. more accountable i want to come to that most difficult issue uh, that society grapples with but nobody wants to talk about according to a 2007 study by the women and child development ministry close to half of all children that they spoke to reported some kind of abuse within their home this is the most difficult to talk about but it is child sexual abuse here is a story from gujarat pani bola tha ye kisi ko bhi batana mat aur main haath rakhne nahi deti thi to wo gala daba dete the rape bhi karte the aur chhed chhad bhi karte the in a small gujarat village a father repeatedly raped his elder daughter for more than 3 years after which he targeted the younger 14 year old but she fought back filing an fir against her father jab baat karne is tarah karta hai main khud main ke uska bura na bolu uska kya kiya jaye ek ko phansi denge to dusra karne wala darega ki kal mere ko bhi phansi hone wali hai you know strong words coming from the survivor of child sexual abuse there but what makes it more difficult is the fear they feel in fact since that story aired on our channels in that particular case in gujarat the girls in question the family in question have actually withdrawn their police case flavia not much needs to be said when we look at what can be done on child sexual abuse when we look at figures that uh, seem to suggest one in two children no have experienced or see some kind of uh, abuse within the home uh, what can we do apart from the government perhaps uh, giving medical legal aid for survivors making sponsored service support centers we have a child helpline already a child helpline that has been much publicized what else can the government do see i think there are inherent problems here firstly imagine a child having to complain against her own father her own uncle firstly nobody believes her they're the most vulnerable and then this little child 8 year old 10 year old 12 year old goes to the police station and you must really see what actually happens at the police station nobody wants to record that complaint everybody is terrorizing the child over there saying that do you really want to file a complaint against your father your father will be locked up for 10 years uh, or 7 years they sometimes they bring the father and make the father shout at the child the police do not want to record these cases and here very clearly the law must act and the law doesn't act secondly the accused comes out in bail which makes the situation of the girl much more dangerous to give her protection she's taken out and put in a shelter home and you should actually go and see the conditions of this shelter homes time and again you'll we have we have a network 18 in fact uh, gone to several stories. of these homes seen yes. uh, what the conditions are inside rashmi what would you say is it's deplorable uh, there uh, we have in fact one of my books is called shelter and on the state or the lack of shelter homes in india and uh, you know it it actually deals with the vision of a shelter home which should be but the condition of what should be and what is there's no match whatsoever so yes. where do these women go where do these children go as we wrap up our discussion uh, shabana azmi we're just looking at statistics none of the statistics are getting any better uh, it's not a problem that is just for india the treatment of women and yet in india it seems as if we are more uh, inured to the problems of women you know i don't feel as pessimistic about it as this discussion is making it seem because we must also remember that india is a country that lives in several centuries simultaneously and because of that you know it encapsulates all the contradictions that come from being the kind of country it is so there's also a case that women are also being empowered women are also coming out and speaking you are seeing that a lot more cases are being reported so we have to look at that and strengthen the atmosphere around so that women have the courage to come out and say and believe that they will actually get help and that i think is actually happening so there uh, there is no room for such pessimism and gloom but a lot more needs, needs to be uh, done and that is an important point that more cases are getting reported let's get to our action points on the show tonight politicians and public personalities must lead by example no dowry zero tolerance for abusers within political parties promote awareness of property rights and rights of residents for women 
full medical, legal, psychological support to the victim of violence, special family counseling centers in government buildings and police centers. The government must provide legal and medical support to the child sex abuse survivors and a thorough accounting of children's homes. Suspend licenses of doctors involved in female feticide and there must be a strict punishment for the parents as well. All right, we'd like to thank all of you ladies for joining us on this show with your powerful voices as well as those powerful action points you've given us. Flavia Agnes, Shabana Azmi, Rashmi Anand, thanks again for joining the power of 49. That's it on this edition of the show, this Jagare initiative along with Network 18. The discussions though will continue and we want you to be a part of that. Log on to jagare.com, push the pin on the women's issue that affects you where you are. Next week, we're going to talk about women's health and sanitation and get you the action points for the manifesto of the power of 49. And we're going to leave you with this through television sets across the country. Bahus from leading television shows have been raising their voices, joining in the power of 49. Give us a missed call on 08007-8007 to tell us what you think. So far, four and a half lakh calls in just two weeks. Certainly that powerful movement is now being joined by women across the country. At Jagore in the power of 49, we will ensure that those voices are heard by the country's politicians. From the team here, thanks for watching. Dahej, Gharelu Hinsa, Ya Beta Paida Karne Ki Zabardasti, Kya Koi Party Inhe Apna Mudda Bana Rai Hai? Elections Kareeb Hai, Jaanchi Hai. कौन सा उम्मीदवार हमारे मुद्दों को अपना मुद्दा बनाएगा मुझे मिस्ड कॉल दीजिए अपने मुद्दे बताइए उन पर उम्मीदवार चर्चा करेंगे ताकि आप सही उम्मीदवार को पावर में ला सके जागो रे जागो रे जागो रे जागो रे जागो